Hey everyone, I hope you're all doing really well. Today I wanna to talk about some products that have tempted me so far in 2022. And these are products that I seriously have my eye on. I haven't yet picked them up. I likely won't pick up some of them, but I kinda of wanted to just chat through like why they're alluring, why they don't make sense for my collection. And just kind of talk about that temptation. I'm trying to be a much more critical consumer, much more considerate and mindful about what comes into my life. And so I think reflecting and talking through these products and my feelings about them is definitely something that could be very be beneficial for me moving forward as I really want to be more mindful, more considerate. I'm really trying this year to avoid over consuming makeup products because I want to utilize what I have. I've spoken about that many times on my channel, but that is definitely the biggest part of my makeup journey for 2022 for myself. And I am on a category specific no buy. So I will link that video down in the description box if you wanna check that out. I'm also keeping tabs on my beauty consumption in general, not just makeup. But today we're focusing on some makeup releases that have really caught my eye and I want to just chat through them. So let's hang out, maybe grab a snack or a glass of wine. Let's chill. Let's talk about some new makeup and yeah, let's get right on into it. So the first product I want to talk about is one that I have already mentioned on my channel as one that has really caught my eye and it is the Salt New York Sneaky Balms. This is a kind of like tinted moisturizer. It's labeled as a hydrating skin tint. And these are $16 USD, which equates to being almost $20 Canadian. However, you don't get very much product in here at all. And it's very minimal packaging, which I love. I love how little packaging there is. It's just simply a recyclable tin, like a pan, magnetic pan, that's it. it comes with 0.15 ounces. Typically foundations come with, with one full fluid ounce but I rarely am able to work my way through a foundation, especially these days. So I think that there is a benefit to the fact that it comes with very little product because it's actually usable. You can actually use it up to completion. However, the price point is quite high given how little product comes in it. I have not yet tried anything from Salt New York and believe me, I am so tempted by the brand, but again, I'm just really trying to be very considerate about what comes into my life. So as I work out a few more products in the coming months, possibly I will purchase something from Salt New York, but I am on a base product no buy, so the Sneaky Bomb will not be coming into my life until 2023, which is a long time to wait, but I think this product will be worth the wait. It looks like it is just so, so skin-like and so natural while also offering this slightly perfected, more uniform kind of look. And that's what I've been really loving for the skin. I want something that looks like skin, but offers just a little bit of coverage. And this just looks perfect. It comes in 12 shades and they look very flexible because of their sheerness. And honestly, I'm really talking myself into this product the more I talk about it, but I know I'm gonna hold off for a little while because I do have foundations and tinted moisturizers that do the trick just fine, that do work very well for me. And I wanna enjoy them and not let them go bad because I'm bringing something new into my life. Next up, I was very, very tempted by the Shine by SD Duality Collection. So this is actually two eyeshadow palettes that each contain six eyeshadows. These are custom made eyeshadows that were in collaboration with creators on Instagram, I believe. I'll leave links to both of the creators that this collection is a collaboration with down in the description box and on the screen here. But one palette was designed by Lisa. Um, their handle is Bizarro Volta. I don't know, I probably pronounced that incorrectly. And then the other palette was designed and curated by Monica, which is M Jones 5018. So I will leave that all down in the description box, like I said. And I think the entire idea of this collection is really unique. There's only six eyeshadows in each of the palettes. They're meant to be used in tandem, but also separately. They're meant to belong together, but also have this kind of disconnect from one another. And these are all multi-chrome, really unique looking eyeshadows, really gorgeous looking eyeshadows. So it's 12 multi-chrome shadows. However, the two palettes in this collection totals $226, which 
for me just really is why I cannot justify purchasing this for 12 eyeshadows. I know that some multi-chrome brands are very expensive. Some eyeshadow brands in general are very expensive. But when I saw the price point for this palette, even though I was super, super intrigued and really, really drawn to it, I just could not justify spending that much money on it. Now, this is an independent black owned Canadian brand from Nova Scotia. So it is a brand that I do eventually want to support. I really want to try out some Shine by SD eyeshadows. I'm swimming in makeup right now. I, I have just far too much eyeshadow. And so I just cannot justify spending such a high price tag to bring in 12 more shadows. I love the idea of a very curated collection of only 12 shadows coming out in a new release. I think that's great. I don't like excessively large collections, but I just can't justify it with where I'm at in my collection right now. I want to use and love on the collection that I have. And yeah, if I had like a really good YouTube, like Google AdSense month, maybe I would pick it up just to try it and just to see and to review it. But I just can't right now justify such a high price point. I do eventually wanna pick up maybe even just like four or five pans of eyeshadow to add to my singles collection. Cause I really, really think that these look so unique, so high impact, so beautiful. And it's a small brand that I really want to show support for as well. We may as well talk about another eyeshadow palette that tempted me. This is an eyeshadow palette that I felt like I was seeing quite a lot on Instagram when it was first um, teased. And then I haven't seen anything else about it at all, at all, in quite a while actually, but I really was tempted by this the first at the first sight of it. And that is the Urban Decay Wild Greens palette. Urban Decay products, I feel like they get like a lot of hype from like Trend Mood and other large creators because they do end up getting them in PR right on launch. But Urban Decay is kind of one of those brands that I feel like is moving on to the next collection very, very quickly. So I feel like this has just completely dropped off of the radar for so many people. But initially I was very drawn to this. However, I know I'm not ever gonna purchase this. This is not something that's going to make its way into my life by any means, but I still want to talk about it because that initial draw was very strong. This is a fully vegan eyeshadow palette. It comes in really unique to Urban Decay kind of packaging. It's um, really quite cute. I think that the packaging looks fun. I know it's very polarizing, but I kind of like that unique sort of feeling where it's not like your traditional palette that kind of opens like a book, but um, th there's a graphic that kind of opens up in the middle. I'll have pictures on the screen because I'm not describing this very well. And the illustrations on the packaging are also really cute. And I just feel like it really drew me in. But then when you look at the inside of the palette, it contains 12 eyeshadows, five of which are green-ish kind of tones. And then the rest of them, so seven others, are just neutral, natural kind of tones. And while this is not called a all green palette, it is wild greens. And so initially it feels like it fits the theme, but not even half the palette is green. And so I started thinking about it more critically and realizing like, I have these shades, these natural shades, endless times in my collection already. And the greens that they have are not even that unique. They're not that special or vibrant or dimensional either. These are greens that I have a hundred times over in my collection already as well, because they're probably the most wearable of green shadows, which is good. It makes green really approachable. I think green is having its moment right now, which I'm so happy for, because you know, I love my green eyeshadows. But I realized that it just missed the mark for me. This is a $58 Canadian palette, which is kind of steep for 12 eyeshadows in my opinion. I haven't seen anyone talk about it since it initially launched. I saw some people create eye looks with it and then it has had no buzz, at least in the circles that I'm keeping an eye on in any capacity. So this palette just did not have the longevity um, that I would hope for. And at the end of the day, this palette doesn't really add anything to my collection and I don't wanna say it, but maybe it doesn't add any sort of major value to other people's collections and maybe that's in part why it's already come and gone so quickly. But also I think that that is also just a reflection of how quickly the beauty industry is moving forward, forward, forward into the newest launch time and time again. 
that something that just came out it, only a few months ago, earlier, earlier part of this year, has already completely fallen off the radar. I think that that is something that is really unfortunate about this space right now, and that is a true reflection of what's happening in this space as well. A bit of a newer release that has really caught my eye is the Danessa Myrick's Yummy Skin Blurring Balm Powder. The name is what really, I think, intrigued me because what are you even talking about? It's a blurring balm powder. Balm, to me, denotes hydrating, it denotes rich and creamy, and then powder is a little bit more that soft, dry kind of feeling. And so the, hearing those words together is definitely alluring, and this product seems extremely innovative and interesting, and it is one that I'm very much intrigued by. This product is available in 11 shades. I believe one of those shades is technically a translucent one, but then there's 10 like skin tone kind of shades, which range very well. It looks like a beautiful shade range. And this is $48 Canadian, which is quite hefty for what is labeled as a powder. However, what is so interesting about this product is the fact that it actually is labeled as being able to be used as a primer. You can use it as a standalone base product and you can also use it as a setting powder and a touch-up powder. So it's kind of like an all-in-one complexion product that can do it all and that is just so bizarre to me. It says that it is a soft matte kind of formula, but it offers hydration for the entire day. And I just feel like that sounds so interesting. I am so drawn to the idea of a product that is this all-in-one yet standalone kind of product. I don't know. It's very, very interesting. I'm not sure that this product would break my complexion no buy because I could technically buy it and call it a powder or a primer. <laughs> I'm not trying to justify purchasing it because I still don't think I'm going to purchase it in the immediate future, but my golly, I am probably going to get this eventually because this just sounds too good to be true and too interesting to not try. I really do want to become more familiar with this brand because everything that I've seen just looks incredible. And Danessa Myricks is a makeup artist by trade and so I think that the products are really innovative because she knows how to work with products and how to kind of mix things together. She truly is an artist and I think that her products really, really show that for sure. So I'm very much intrigued by that. I'm honestly really intrigued by many of the products that came out in the Yummy Skin collection. There's a serum foundation as well. And we know I don't need any more foundations, but I'm always drawn to them. And yeah, especially things that use the word yummy. I kind of feel like I need it but I'm not gonna get it anytime soon. One final product that has really caught my eye, this is one that I think has come out more recently. Maybe I started seeing it in April, I'm not entirely sure, but it's one that definitely, definitely caught my eye. It is the Charlotte Tilbury Beautiful Skin Sun-Kissed Glow Bronzer. The name, the name, it just sounds so good. Glow Bronzer, yep, hello. I'm gonna need that for sure. That was my first impression is like, this sounds great. Charlotte Tilbury is really good at creating these names that just sound so delicious and so just alluring. And that is really what drew me into this product. The packaging looks super cute. The product in the pan looks really cute. And then I kept reading about it and I was like, dang, that sounds great. This sounds amazing. This is available in four shades. They look very, very good. It looks like a really gorgeous range of shades available. It seems like it would be something that could suit many people. It claims that it's a 16 hour wear cream bronzer. This is a cream bronzer formula and it, it claims to be 16 hours wear, which is just unfathomable to me. I find that when it comes to cream blushes and bronzers, I do not get that many hours of wear. Not that I wear my makeup ever for that long, but I get like a handful of hours of like really good intense wear out of them and then they dissipate. But that's the thing about cream products. I really like them for that reason that they fade in this very soft, natural way. So 16 hours of wear sounds impeccable and it claims to be sweat proof while also being hydrating. 
And so again, this is very similar to that Danessa Myricks product I'm actually just putting together this now in the fact that it's kind of like a cream to powder sort of formula that is not drying. It sounds so intriguing, so, so intriguing. And all of that sounds so great, but then I looked at the price point. For Canadians, this costs a whopping $69 for a bronzer. And yes, you get a lot of product. You get 21 grams of product in it. But who the heck needs 21 grams of bronzer? I know I don't, that is for sure. I have 28 grams of bronzer in the Milk Makeup Stick. And I purchased that in 2019 and it's still going strong. There's still so much product in there. So I know for a fact that that just does not make sense for me or my makeup application style or collection in general, because I, I already own three cream bronzers in my collection and there is no way that I'm working my way through all three of those in any sort of timely manner. So I just don't need another cream bronzer. While it's extremely interesting and it sounds so good, it just doesn't make sense. And then one other thing about this was that I expected that the packaging would be the refillable packaging for this. However, it's not. So um, I, I have been really liking seeing that Charlotte Tilbury is coming out with more of these refillable options. The powder bronzer is refillable. Um, there's some lipsticks from Charlotte Tilbury that come in refillable bullets. I actually have one of them, the Angel Alessandra. I love it and I love the packaging. And the brand is doing a lot more in terms of offering more inclusive ranges as well. This bronzer range, like I said, seems very inclusive to my eyes and in my opinion. However, I'd love to hear more insight from other people. I feel like so many things about this brand are making steps forward. And then I noticed that this was not a refillable option. And I feel like that's something that, although it's not a make or break kind of thing for me, because I don't think that 21 grams of product would ever need to be refilled by me. I do think that it's something that I've been really liking seeing from the brand and I'd like to see more of. So why not make that a possibility? Like maybe one day they would have the same kind of pan for a blush product or a highlighter. And then one day you could refill it with a different type of Charlotte Tilbury product in the future. I don't know. Anyways, I'm just off on a tangent now, but I don't need it. I don't need any more bronzers in my life. No way, no how. I just decluttered a few and I still feel like I have plenty of options. So we're sticking with what I got in terms of bronzers. I'm sticking with what I got in terms of eyeshadows, um, complexion products, all the things that drew me in so far this year are the things where I already have more than enough variety and I don't wanna find myself falling back into my old habits of trying something just because it sounds interesting, it sounds new, and buying it for the purpose of reviewing it as well just isn't something that makes sense for me either in my life. It just doesn't make sense for me as a consumer, but it was fun to sit down and kind of chat about all these products that are really interesting to me. Let me know if you're interested in any of these products, if you've purchased any of these products, if you have feelings about any of these brands that I haven't yet tried. Like, really wanna try more Danessa Myricks, really wanna try some Salt New York products in due time. Really, really also do want to try out some of the Shine by SD products. They just look so beautiful. I am very chatty right now, but yeah, that's everything. Thank you so, so much for watching and for hanging out with me and I'll see you in the next one. Bye everyone. Mm -hmm.